So page five is two D's and three A's. It's a little mini baby waterfall. Okay, so those are the A's cut in pieces. And then the two D pieces. Okay, so two D's, three A's. Two D's and three A's. So that's the end of the A's. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the A's that we did last time. We're gonna cut off the long half inch section and then cut them in half. Okay, so cutting the long half inch section off of the A pieces. And then we're gonna cut them in half. So they are eight and a half inches long, so we need to cut each of them at four and a quarter. Okay, so those are gonna be our waterfall pieces. And then while you have the D's, or the trimmer out, we are going to cut off one inch off one of the D pieces. And then the other one we're going to leave exactly as it is. So put your trimmer away. And we're going to get our last base page. Okay, so the um, D piece that you have not done anything with is going to go on the left side of your base page. Okay, the opening again is on the left. Okay, and then I'm really struggling to get these straight. I'm trim just a little bit. I think I might have cut these all a little bit too big. That looks better. Kind of. I'm just trying to recrease it a little bit straighter. There we go, that's better. Okay, and then the D piece that you cut um, the inch off of is going to go on the right side of the base. So open the first one up and put that second D on the right edge. Okay, it's gonna go over top of the first one. And then all of our A's are going to form a waterfall. Uh, so I'm gonna go on the far right at the top here for the first piece. And then the next one, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space really hard to see. So there is the end. Here's the end of the half inch section of the first one. I'm going to go down another like eighth of an inch or so, about like that for the second one, just to leave a tiny space there. Now, if you so desire, you can put um, a piece of paper here now. Um, 
but I'm gonna kind of do like paper piecing afterwards so totally up to you I like to use up my scraps so that's a great way to do that try to make sure you're straight oh. okay and then do the next one Again, leaving that little bit of space. And do that for five of them. And then I didn't do it on the example that I showed you, but um, uh, I'm going to switch it up. The sixth one I'm going to have coming from the bottom to kind of act as a closure for the waterfall. Okay, so I'm going to have the bottom one come up from the bottom, or the, the last one come up from the bottom. And we're going to kind of do the same uh, swing tab technique that we did on the last one and that way a it will be like uh, cohesive between the two pages and I just kind of like the surprise of having the waterfall underneath there you can't right away see it so you don't know that there's something completely different than on the opposite page okay so line it up all right so there you go and that um, we'll have like a magnetic swing tab here as well and that will keep all of that from doing that <laughs> okay so we'll do a magnetized swing tab there and we'll also do a magnet um, going from this D to the bottom D you could do two magnets I think I'm just gonna do one I think one will be enough Okay, so I'll get some of my paper on and I'll come back and show you and we're going to do the magnetized swing tab the exact same way that we did the one on the previous page. Okay, so I have got so far the same kind of swing tab, uh, magnetized swing tab on the front and then in between each of the waterfall bits I just have a little strip. Uh, I'm going to cover up this brad in a second and then I've got a little strip of paper here and then when you open it up you, this is another one of the papers from that same distress link distress link distress ink lifting video and then uh, so is that one there kind of wish this flower was moved over just a little bit but it is what it is so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it the way it is uh, I'm gonna leave all of these just plain for photos I'm just gonna cover this one up I think I'd originally had this but now it looks too busy so I think I might just go with I might just go with one of these I think yeah um I'm going to cut this in half. And just put that down there to cover that up. I don't think I need it backed though. I think I'm just going to do it without the extra paper if I can get this off. Yes, I think it's going to let me. Perfect. So that is 
page five. You can pause that if you need to at any point um, to see what I've done. Um, so that really matches quite well with uh, your page four. And I like that they're completely different, yet um, uh, they kind of look this, a little bit the same from the, from the get-go. Oh, I'm kind of bound about this flower. I wish, hmm, I almost want to like, no, I don't want to cover it up, but kind of wish I'd left this a little bit longer. Oh, well, it is what it is. We're going to, we're going to deal with it. All right. Uh, that is it for page five. We are moseying along. Okay, so moving forward on to page six. This is our last official page, and then we've got the front and the back covers um, left to do, as well as the actual cover, etc. So, page six. This is what it looks like. So, this opens up like that, and down like that, and then this one opens to this side, and that one opens to that side, and there is a pocket. So for page six, we are going to need one B piece, two C pieces, one D piece. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of cutting. We are, get your trimmer out. We are gonna cut the B piece at four inches. So we're cutting this little bit off. So this is your B pocket now. And then we are cutting the D piece right in half. Right, so right now it is at seven and a half. So we're going three and three quarters. Make sure those are even. If they're not, trim a smidge off one. There's usually a little bit left over because it's not an even number. Okay, and then we're going to re-miter those corners. Fabulous. And then the C pieces. We are going to, we don't need to cut them, but we are going to score them. So get your scoreboard. We are going to score at two and a half opposite the score line with the score tape that you've already done. So put it in your scoreboard with the score taped side on the right and um, downwards. And then we're going to score at two and a half. We're going to do that to both of the C pieces. Okay, because these pieces, these small ones are going to go up and then this part is going to fold back and then they're going to meet at center. Okay, now we can put our scoreboard out of the way and start putting our page together. Okay, so grab that last base page. We just finished that. Now we're going to flip it over. We are going to first fold and crease all of our score lines. Okay, so our two, well, our one D piece cut in half is going to have um, our top, we're going to put them on the top and the bottom so that they meet at center. So we'll have top right, bottom left is how I had it. I mean, you can do it either way, but I had one going at the top right of the base page. 
and then the other one going on the bottom left. I've got my top one just a smidge high. Let's see if I can move it down a little bit. Nope, it doesn't want to move. <laughs> So I've got a little space in there. I did cut a little bit off my ease. I probably didn't need to do that, but that's all right. Um, so it should they should meet in the center. I cut a smidge off too much. Um, we're going to open these up and put our B pocket down at the bottom of the base page. Okay, and then the two C pieces are going to go on top of the E's. Well, yeah, so on top of the E's, one at the bottom, one at the top. So one will go at the top of the top E. And then the other one will go at the bottom of the bottom E and they will meet at center. So that little space where the E's doesn't really matter because these C's will cover that up. See and they meet exactly in center and then we'll have swing tabs or something of that nature on these two bits and that is it. So we can um, I'm going to put magnets going from the backs of the E's to the base and the B pocket. Okay, so that is that. And now you can put magnets um, from these pieces or you could just have something in the center that closes them here. Um, totally depends on how many magnets you want to use and um, all that jazz. So, what is my plan? I think I am going to put magnets um, on the backs of the C pieces. Amazing. A lot of my decisions are made up on the fly because I kind of, I kind of write down what it is I'm going to do, but um, not entirely. And then a lot of things get changed as I go. And <laughs> it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things that get moved around and decided as I, as I make them. But that's kind of what I like about crafting. All right, uh, here I am going to do some swing tabs, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Okay, so I'm going to leave those for now and just do a couple swing tabs there. It might change again later, but who knows. All right, so I'm going to get my pattern paper organized and then we will go from there. Okay, so I've got a bit of the paper on, but now I'm going to add a couple swing tabs to close these little um, C-flaps. Okay, so I'm going to kind of place it where I want it to go. They're immediately drawn to the magnets right now. Uh, okay, so right about there. mark and the bottom paper. Can I see that? Yep. And then try and do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Perfect. And then punch the holes in the paper here. Um, just make sure that you don't have any pattern paper 
on the back side as of yet. And punch your hole. And I need a couple browns. Okay, so it's gonna go through here and through the paper. Awesome, there's one. I was gonna do some embossing on these, but my I just need to wait for my new powder to, or not powder, the my new ink pad to arrive because it just, <laughs> just doesn't want to work unless it's on watercolor paper right now. And it's frustrating. Okay. Now, I love um, using these like metal filigree uh, embellishments uh, or metal bits as swing tabs and stuff. Just be careful when you're using ones that are like this with like sharp edges that they don't get caught on something on the next page. So try to use them in places either where there's just a flat surface on the next page or something like that so they don't get caught. All right, so that's the front. Um, now I'm going to open this down and open this up and place these pieces. I've just got some plain white there. And where was this going? Oh, okay. So I had the plain white here. Is that right? To, I just had this all sorted out and I'm already forgetting. Okay, so I'm like kind of rust color almost here. And then I've got um, another one of those pieces that I did in that um, the embossing ink lifting video. So kind of like a, an array of yellows and oranges there. And then when you open, when you open these up. I'm gonna go patterned on the inside and then whites on the outside. I'm just gonna cover those tines with some score tape. All right, our last two pieces. Okay. And that is page six. So we've got all of our pages done now. Oops. And like that. And now we are going to create our binding and then we're gonna create our cover. Okay, so for the binding, cut two pieces of cardstock that measure uh, two and a half inches wide by seven and a quarter inches, and then get your scoreboard. And we are going to score these pieces at three quarters, so on the two and a half inch side, 
We're scoring at three quarters, seven eighths, and one. And then we're going to score at one and a half, one and five eighths, and one and three quarters. Okay, so do that to both of them. So again, that's three quarters, seven eighths, and one. One and a half, one and five eighths, and one and three quarters. Okay. We're going to fold on all of those score lines, but before we do that, I want to cover the back side with some Tyvek. So um, cut a couple strips of Tyvek that are at least wide. They don't have to be the full two and a half inches wide. They just have to be wide enough that they cover the score lines. Okay, so mine are about, they look about two inches. So I'm just going to trim these down. Like they don't have to be exact, just as long as they're going to cover those score lines. Okay, because we want these to be really strong. If you don't have any Tyvek, the Tyvek um, is going on the, uh, the mountain side of the score lines. And if you don't have Tyvek, then I suggest just doubling up the cardstock. So putting two, gluing two pieces together and um, after it's dry, then scoring it to make it uh, extra thick. So you just want them to be really strong. Okay, so now fold and crease those score lines really well. And I know it's annoying to fold on score lines that are that close together, especially with the Tyvek on the back, but uh, it will be worth it. Your pages will move really nicely if you do that. Okay, so this is going to take just a little bit of time, so I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, and then we will bind all of our pages together, and then we will make our cover. Okay, so once you've got those folded, we're going to put some score tape on them. So we're going to put score tape on both sides of um, just the three quarter inch part, so we're not gonna we're gonna make sure that no score tape is on any of the score lines. So on one of the hinge hinges, put score tape on both sides of that three quarter inch part. On the other hinge, just put score tape on both sides of one half. On the other half, just put score tape on the inside. On the outside, leave it blank. I'll show you why right now. We are going to adhere these two together. So we're going to remove the backing from this one. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of wet adhesive as well, just to give myself, with the wet adhesive it gives you a little bit of wiggle room so you can maneuver your piece around just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to adhere these together. Okay, so now you should have something that looks like that. Now, if you desire, you don't have to do this, but you can kind of trim a little bit off, um, like miter the corners of um, these just a little bit, just to make it easier, because these are what are going to slide into your page openings. Um, so if it does make it a little bit easier to slide them in, it's not absolutely necessary, but 
And again, make sure you're not cutting into the uh, score lines. All right, so if you did want to trim it, it's just a little tiny bit off the ends. Okay, so now get your pages and peel off the score tape backing from the first kind of flange, is that what it's called? The first little bit of your um, binding system. Put a little bit of wet adhesive, you don't need very much. This is basically, this is more to help um, you put it in the right place than anything else. I mean, it does, it definitely does help to also secure it for sure. All right, so we're going to put that into the, the opening of our pages right there. And we're just gonna slide this in right up to the first score line, but we're not gonna go over that score line. We want all, all of the score lines to still be showing, okay? And then press it down really well. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the next, next one. Fantastic. Make sure your pages are the right side, the right way up and everything, and then open that, get it to where it's the, the opening of the page, and then just slide it on. I mean, you can do it whichever way is easiest for you, holding it up with your book on the counter, with your pages on the counter, whatever is the easiest method for you. I'm trying to do it so that I can show you at the same time. Could have been in a little bit more. That's all right. Okay, and then the last one. Are you opening? There you are. All right, and now your pages are all bound together. And my two, uh, I didn't think that through, I've got magnets on the exact same spot, so when the pages close, the, the, the pages themselves keep magnetizing together. Um, yeah, that wasn't my most brilliant idea, but that's all right. <laughs> Live and learn. Okay, so set these aside and now we are going to create our cover.